iOS 18 is officially available, and so in this video, we're going to go over all of the new features that I think you need to know before you update iOS 18 takes home screen customization to another level, finally letting users place app icons freely throughout your home screen, and you can even customize your icons too. So to move an app around, you just long press it until it starts jiggling, and then you can just drag and drop like you normally would, but you can put it wherever you want, leaving blank space to see your wallpaper. But if you wanna customize your icons, just go ahead and click the plus icon in the top left corner and then hit customize. From here, you'll have a couple of different options to choose from, the standard light icons that we all know and love, then there's dark mode icons, or you can have the icons change from that light to dark mode automatically depending on the time of the day. And there's even a tinted option, which is where you can select any color that you want and all of your icons will be matched to that color and your widgets will be color matched and it'll look really cool depending on which one you pick. And you can also change the size from small to large and the large icons will actually remove the text. The control center is also completely customizable and has been redesigned to feature additional pages for media, smart home controls, and one page dedicated to connectivity. To add custom controls, you just simply long press and tap the plus icon at the bottom, and third-party app developers will be able to add custom controls for their own apps. If you have an iPhone with an action button, you can even set one of these control center controls as your action button command in the settings app. And the last customization specific feature in iOS 18 that I wanted to touch on is that you can now finally change the controls on your lock screen to be something other than the standard flashlight and camera app icons that we've had for so many years. You can actually select from any of the controls available in the controls gallery or remove them entirely for an ultra minimalist lock screen. The Photos app has been redesigned to feature more of the library that might be unique and important to you. And it also can be customized to your liking. So you'll notice that once you open up the Photos app, if you just keep swiping down, you'll have access to your entire library, every single photo, but then quick and easy filtering options located along the bottom, along with the years or months filters as well. If you scroll up, this is where you'll start to see some of these different categories like recent days, people and pets, pinned collections, and more. Messages got a few new features like being able to tap back on messages with any emoji or sticker. You're no longer limited to those six options that we had before. Again, you can choose not only any emoji that you might have, but also any sticker. And you can also send texts at a later date by simply typing out your message and then tapping the plus icon and selecting send later. You can schedule a text to be sent out up to two weeks in advance and you can edit that text even before it's sent. RCS is also available so that now you can message friends and family who might not have an iPhone. Let's say they have an Android device and you'll no longer be messing up the group chats. You can send messages to them over Wi-Fi only if self-service isn't available and photos and videos that are sent from you or sent from them will no longer look awful and it'll be in its full resolution. The Passwords section of the Settings app is now its own full-fledged Passwords app. And from here, you'll be able to do everything that you were able to do, but just in a much faster and more convenient way. You can save new passwords, create new passwords and pass keys, have all your Wi-Fi passwords in one place, create verification codes, and you can manage everything that has to do with passwords in this app and even share them quickly and easily with family and friends. It's just a much faster way to access all of that important information for these apps and websites. Lastly, here are some quick rapid fire features that you should definitely check out, like being able to lock any app via face or touch ID by just long pressing on the app and selecting the lock option, or you can also just choose to hide the app, which will then lock the app and place it in a special hidden apps folder. Distraction control in Safari can be used to hide static content on a page. And while in theory, one of those annoying things could be a pop-up ad, it's important to note that this is not an ad blocker and it cannot be used to permanently hide ads. Once the page is refreshed, everything comes back. Your distraction control settings are on device only and will not sync from device to device. So those elements aren't hidden if you go to your iPad or something else. And if you wanna bring those elements back, you just use the show hidden items option in the bottom of the Safari search field, and you'll be able to see all of your hidden elements on that web page. 
There are also, of course, tons of new Apple intelligence features that will be rolling out over the course of the next few months. You'll have Genmoji, Image Playground, the new and improved Siri, but we'll have a separate video showcasing all of that, as well as some other iOS 18 centric videos coming in the next few weeks. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. And yeah, that's all of the ones that I think you should try right now when you get iOS 18 updated on your phone. But let us know in the comments down below what your favorite feature is. And of course, please be sure to like this video if you ended up finding it helpful. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.